the foregoing session, we created the project tree and configured the control functions. Furthermore, we added animated elements to the water plant graphic. Finally, we defined the look and feel of the trend display for historical process values. Now everything is ready to load the project and to get it running. We will perform an overall plausibility check and switch to commissioning mode to load the process station and afterwards the operator station. We start the plant manually as we did before and switch uh, LIC10 to automatic mode. Let's open some more faceplates. If you click the Tile Faceplates button, all faceplates will be positioned side by side in a row. This gives you the best overview about all open faceplates. If you click the Cascade Faceplates button, all faceplates are stacked in the upper left corner. Now only a small portion of the entire screen is covered with faceplates. You can easily bring the faceplates you like to the foreground. Five faceplates can be opened at the same time. If you open an additional one, faceplate number one is closed and the new one is shown. You can pin a faceplate to prevent it from being closed when a new one is opened. Let's have a look on how DigiVis displays alarms and how you can handle them. Therefore, let's drive the plant in a critical situation. No problem, as we are working with a simulated process. Switch the control loop to manual mode. Set the out value to 100%. When the tank level reaches the higher than max 2 limit, the pump NP10 of the inlet pipe is stopped. Since the outlet pump NP21 and the outlet flap NS21 are started automatically, the tank starts to get empty. When the tank's level reaches the lower than min 2 limit, the outlet pump NP21 is protected. The alarm message is indicated flashing yellow since the priority is set to 3. The priority was set in the parameter window of NP21. If we change the priority to 1 and load the changes, we see that the alarm is displayed in red. You see one more alarm in the message line. This informs that the level in the tank is lower than min 2. The pump itself is shown in yellow, indicating that it is not running. The message line is always visible. Normally, the message line is represented in the standard view, where each individual alarm lists the tag name and the message text. If you want more information, open the message list. On the left you see a small rectangle. Its color indicates the priority of the alarm. A plus sign that the alarm is still active or a minus sign that the problem is already solved. Furthermore, the plant area, the tag name, a short text and the message text are listed. This detailed information is also shown as a tooltip. Just move the cursor across an alarm as you can see for the NP21 protection alarm. A right click on the alarm opens the aspect menu. With a double click on the alarm you open its faceplate. If you look at the faceplate of NP21 you see one protection alarm flashing. You can acknowledge the alarm with a click on the faceplate's acknowledge button. Instead of acknowledging alarms via the faceplate, 
you can perform this from the message list. At the bottom of the window there are two buttons. With the first one you acknowledge all alarms in the page. With the second button only the selected alarms. Furthermore, you can visually acknowledge all alarms with the button right to the message line. It clears the alarms in the message line but keeps them in the message list. Digivis offers two more representations of the message line. The area view has one field for each plant area and a counter for the number of alarms in that area. An example of an area could be the inlet pipe of our model. Then each tag belonging to the inlet pipe could be associated to this area. In our case simply default names like area A or area C are used, which doesn't tell so much. We will improve that in the next step. But before we perform that Let's have a look at the list presentation of the message line. It comes with a list of alarms and a lot of attributes similar to the message list. Back in Control Builder F we switch to configuration mode and open the area definition window where we override the strings for area A, B and C with inlet, tank B10 and outlet. Afterwards we open the tag list. If we double click in the area column of an entry, the area selection window opens and we can assign an area to the selected tag. As you see, most of the tags are not assigned to an area right now. Let's change that for some tags of the inlet and outlet pipe and the tank. When we are done, we go back to commissioning mode and load the changed objects. By the way, note how fast this is done. Back in Digivis we select the area view of the message line. Besides the system area we see now, as expected, the inlet, tank, B10 and outlet area. The outlet alarms are shown in yellow and tank B10 in red. The counter lists the number of active alarms. If we open the message list, the new area names are also shown here. Digivis has some very interesting features which makes life much easier. An example is the quick selection window. If we open it the first time, it's empty. If we right click a button, we can assign the current display or the current faceplate to this button. As you see, we can add the water plant display, a trend display, and some faceplates on the fly and we can easily switch between those displays. Finally, you see that our trends are working as shown in the overview video. I am pretty sure it wouldn't be a problem for you to add another trend with some other interesting variables. In this session we learned how to work with faceplates, how alarms are displayed and handled and how to assign and access displays using the quick selection window.